Hello and welcome to the Cyber One YouTube channel. My name is Ray and in this video part three of the version two in move skull I'm going to install the jaw. I'm also going to install this part which actually carries the servo for the jaw. This is the uh, top skull servo fix component and I've already pre-installed some nut certs to support this. It's designed to support two servos, but in actual fact it only uses one servo. We are going to be using this adapter piece. Uh, it was designed by a builder uh, to carry a PCA9685 board. Uh, so we'll mount that onto there and we're going to put our servo on this side. It is possible to actually put the servo on this side if you choose to. You've just got to remember to put this piece in the other way around. So let's get started. So this is the jaw component. If you've built an Inmu version one head before, uh, you'll be familiar with that, but normally the lips are formed into it. In this case, it's going to have a synthetic skin over it, but we are going to need teeth and here is a teeth or the teeth for it so we've got two screws these are yeah i think they're m2.5s yeah all right m2.5 by 20 millimeters long and these ones are a, a hex screw Now, like all the other screws, don't over tighten them. Well, that's pretty good. Now, something to be aware of on the bottom of this jaw component, and I'm going to see if I can get in close enough for you to see it. You can see these little round divots. There's actually four of them. They're actually for 10 millimeter by 1.5 millimeter magnets. Uh, the idea is you glue the magnets in and you glue matching magnets into the synthetic skin once or silicon skin once we've made that mold and it will clip into place and hold it there. I couldn't get the 1.5 millimeter magnets uh, as much as I tried but I did get one millimeter so what I'm going to do is add a magnet into each of these holes and one into each of the silicon skin holes and then add an additional magnet for each joint that can be either on the body or on the skin all right so next we've got the uh, side pieces for the jaw these go on like so and nut and bolt from memory Nearly everything to do with this head, very small or relatively small screws, and you need it would be easier with smaller fingers. In this case, it is nut and bolt, which adds its own dexterity issues. There's something in that screw head hole. Might find another screw the same size. Now that we've got those on, we'll put them into the robot. So this comes up from underneath. I'm going to try a side view. push it up like so and hook into this hole here and we do the same on the other side now 
we have a moving jaw. Just move these wires out of the way. Now we do have this bar that still needs to go in. And in this bar we have a threaded portion. And that will screw in like so. Now this is driven by the servo to push this whole bar assembly up and down. So let's get this in here first. As you can see it doesn't move far to get full travel. And we won't be using full travel normally anyway. Now one of the things I did notice is this has a tendency to come off, come loose which is not good when you're trying to drive it with a servo. So what I've done is on these side pivot points, there is a hole in them. And so I've used a screw with a washer on it to hold that in place so that it doesn't come loose, still allowing it to pivot. And it's just screwed into the plastic. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, so with this part, we're going to use the round servo head and put that on. And I'm actually screwing from this side. And we're going to use these small self-tapping screws that are six millimeters long. Before we put that on, don't forget to put this black screw in. This screw is used to fix this servo uh, horn onto the servo, but we're going to want to do that after we get the servo in place. because we need to screw this component in before we install the servo. So that just pushes in. Now you will note that there is a small hole up through the middle of the screw part and that allows a very thin screwdriver, uh, Phillips number zero, to get down and engage into that screw so that we can rotate the screw. We can now install that into our bar. And the next part we're going to do is with this. So this is the servo, top servo skull fix. And before I install that, I'm going to actually install this PCA9685 adapter. Uh, and I'm using these very short, I think they're six millimeter long uh, flathead M3 screws. Now there is four screw holes here and I have actually put nut certs into all four, but we don't need all four. There's very little load from the, the PCA9685 on this, mechanically speaking. But for looks, I'm just going to put them all in anyway. Next we have our PCA9685. I'm going to make mine that way round, put all the servo connections on the inside. Maybe. So I might put them that way. That puts zero closest to the front. That might be better. And the screws I'm using for this are M2.5, 6mm uh, diameter, oh sorry, 6mm long M2.5. Again, re threading into plastic, so don't over tighten. 
Now let's set that on top here. Forget, uh, don't forget to feed your servo wire through for the uh, neck rotate. Before I put this on, I'd better show you something. I did have to notch out just in here so that the servo on the servo adapter will actually fit into this part. This was originally designed for a larger servo like the um, oh, the 80, 805BB, the, the large scale servo that had been used in the previous version. And this works quite well like so. The screws I'm using to fix this down are 15mm long M3. And that goes through here. Through our servo adapter and then we can hold it down. We can do the same on the back here. I would suggest not overly tightening those ones just yet because we want to get all of them in first. And now we can install the servo. So the servo has its output shaft on the forward part. And I've just broken my base. All right, so I will have to repair that. It's not that hard to repair. I'll have to pull it out and apply resin. So I've just broken this arm off. I have had this servo in here before, so I'm not sure what went wrong there. But we mount that in, screw it up, and then we can push the serp, get this into the middle position and I'll actually try and show this, it's going to be harder since I've broken it. So I'll screw this in and then we'll look at that. And I don't appear to have the screws handy for it. I wonder why that is. I'll just grab them. So I'm using M3 16 10 millimeter long screws and they will go through these holes and into this. This will look better once I've repaired it anyway. Okay, so side view. Move 
the servo cables out of the way now. I'm going to take the base off so I can get up through the bottom. This is where we would use our servo tester to set our servo position. I'm going to set this all the way up one end, push the jaw closed, and then align that shaft on. Actually, I might come back a little first. I will go back to 1500, you know. All these things can be adjusted in the limit settings. Screwdriver up from the bottom. And now we can So that's that part done. So I'll repair this before the next video and get that finished being installed. And after that, we'll look at the top skull. Uh, there's actually before we do the top skull, there is a cluster of servos which will mount on framework at the front here. So I'll do that on the next video and we will, uh, if we're lucky, we might get to the top skull. If you like these videos, don't forget to click on like, subscribe and ring that notification bell. It's a form of support that helps the channel a great deal and costs you absolutely nothing. If you'd like to support the channel further, I do have a Patreon account and you can join my long-term patrons, VOPs go lucky and Lorenz Berger and my builder patron Al Morales 45 in helping to support these videos. If you've got any questions, I'll leave the Discord links in the description below for my channel, the InMove official Discord and the MyRobotLab Discord. And we'll see you in the next video.